Welcome to the latest episode of Athlete to Athlete here on Sportsnet. My name is Arash Madani. We're gathering some of our country's top high performance stars in conjunction with the Canadian Olympic Committee. These competitors will tell us their stories of life during the pandemic, how they're adjusting to having their usual training plans upended and opening up on the relevant social issues of the day. In 2018, Mikhail Kingsbury's sports resume became complete. Before Pyeongchang, he had won everything in freestyle skiing except Olympic gold. That changed on a cold, snowy night on the mountain in South Korea. Kingsbury said he had never felt as much pressure in his life as he did in those finals. But when he delivered and stood atop the podium, Kingsbury cemented himself as the most accomplished, the most dominant mogul skier of all time. Just days prior, snowboarder Max Perot won Canada's first silver medal of those Pyeongchang games. Mission accomplished, Perot told me afterwards. From that February high to the December diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma, chemotherapy, and a health battle that Perot has thankfully persevered through. In our latest episode, the two friends discuss it all right here on Athlete to Athlete. So, Max, man, you in- inspired me so much and inspired so much people. Uh, you battled cancer, you won, and you came back on top. And uh, <laughs> it, was like, it was like a movie. Two months removed from his final round of chemotherapy. And Max Perot has looked incredible. Can you uh, uh, talk uh, to us about your, you know, your coming back from from cancer? Yeah. So uh, last year was uh, was definitely a, a different year for for myself, uh, battling cancer uh, for for six months straight, um, like not not doing my whole season, and that was actually a, a big thing for me, like to to swallow because I've never missed one single contest in my entire career. And after a couple months, uh, let's say after like three to four months of chemotherapy, I was really um, like over it. Uh, it's so hard on the body. You feel like you have like a huge hangover for like, for like three months in a row. And then you're just like, you're just, you're coming to the end, but you're just so tired and like your motivation goes down and down and down. And I was lucky because at that moment, uh, like a couple of days later when I was feeling like really down and I wanted to quit everything, uh, I got an email from uh, X Games telling me that they had, uh, that they were planning to do an X Games in Norway in August. And then I just made the, the like the calcul in my, uh, in, in my head and it was two months after my last chemotherapy. So I was like, okay, this could actually be possible for me to like come back quickly uh, and start doing contests again in August. Because, you know, like when I was younger and I was saying, yeah, like so many people that I wanted to be a pro snowboarder one day, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like not really believing in me. And then like over the years, like I, I accomplished like so many big challenges. And then in the end, uh, when I announced that my family that I wanted to go to X Games and my goal was actually like to win as well. Uh, my family was just like, okay, we believe you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the end, in the end, I was able to, to go out there, get like uh, my energy and my muscles and my cardio back into my two months of training. And uh, I was able to win, uh, which I was really, really happy. Of course, uh, plan worked out <laughs> yeah. uh, because, you know, with, with the cancer and everything, uh, it's, a, it's in those moments that you realize how life is like precious, precious and yeah. important. And, and you're like, I'm, right now I'm 26 years old, but I still want to live another 70 years old. You know, like I, have, I yeah. still have so much in front of me. Like uh, I have to take uh, care of myself. Um, and I just learned that through all of this, uh, yeah. through all of this thing. So you're ranked first for, I don't know how many years, nine, like nine, nine years. years. Yeah. yeah. That, that's crazy. And like, I'm just curious to, to know, like, how do you deal for yourself, uh, with the pressure of like being the best, you know, 
because like I'm, i mean like of course yeah. like you want to win more contests but yeah. like at the contest like among all the other uh athletes how do you feel like with the pressure you know like everyone has the highs on you you know yeah, like everyone I'm, wants to beat you like yeah how do you feel yeah. with that yeah um, i mean I mean, it's the position that everyone wants to be in. You know, I have the, the big target on my back for a long time. And I deal well with, with that position because now I've been used, you know, so much. But, I mean, I, I hate to lose and I love to win. And, I'm, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just try to, you know, push it as, as far as I can. And I, I try to not, you know, I'm the kind of guy I try to not look back, you know, Uh, I know there's, you know, a lot of good skiers that are, you know, they're pushing me, you know, and I, they make me a better skier every time I put my skis on in training. But it's fun to be the leader. It's fun to see that I can push the sport and the sport is maybe better because of me. You know, most of the people, you know, they, they have to, you know, take good step to, to try to beat me. And uh, it's, it's super motivating and I, I'm never going to sit down and be like, Um, I'm at the top and uh, you know I'm, I'm always trying to reach like like if I'm in second place and I'm trying to reach someone but that that someone is never there I'm just trying to, if I know if I beat myself I'll win every event so I mean uh, but for kids I mean if kids that you know wants to be in my position or you know a dominating athlete in any sport I mean the most important thing I think is is to have fun and and you know work hard yeah not work harder than than everyone else i mean yeah i mean you you have to have fun otherwise it's it, it yeah. wouldn't be a passion like you have to be so passionate and uh and this definitely is the is the key to success in anything in the world like you have yeah. to be passionate about what you're doing that's for sure what have you been uh doing lately to keep busy and uh you know during this quarantine time Um, it was definitely a weird time. I mean, for all of us and, uh, I bet for yourself as well. Uh, you know, um, it was the end of the season, but I still had much plans. I had, I was supposed to go to Austria, to Italy, to snowboard in April and one day to another, everything canceled. Uh, I started working on many new projects, um, that I had in my head for such a long time, uh, but never really had time for that. So uh, I started looking uh, at real estate and um, I'm just opening a new restaurant uh, in the next week. So I'm pretty hyped about that. It's, uh, it's totally That's different awesome. from the sport, uh, yeah. but it's another avenue that I was always interested in. And I took this time to, to, to make it happen. And what about you? What have you been doing so far? Uh, it's, yeah, it's very similar. I mean, uh, I haven't, you know, bought a restaurant or something like that, but yeah, I was... Uh, <laughs> I was traveling um, a lot this winter too for um, the World Cup tour and uh, everyone was exhausted, but I was like, you know, I was pumped because I just locked down uh, two weeks before the Crystal Globes. I was like, I'm able to ski the last three World Cup with no pressure on, you know, winning, 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 and I can try new stuff. And like, yes, I thought about, about skiing and stuff and goals, but at the same time, it's been, there's been so many days where I was like just a normal, not even an athlete, you know, just being at home. And that felt so good for my brain. And exactly like you said yesterday, when yeah. I came for the first day of training, I was like a kid, like I was basically running up the stairs to go do another jump. So I think that's yeah, exactly. Really, yeah. So, so, so like you said, like, uh, I wouldn't say that I've been like, uh, an athlete for the past three months, you know, like I was just, uh, doing, doing other stuff. Uh, but like right now, like it's burning inside of me. Think about that for a minute. Kingsbury is just never satisfied. He was Canada's athlete of the year in 2018. He has nothing left to prove in his sport, but he just has that thirst to improve and leave moguls in a better spot than he entered it. Oh, and the next time you're in uh, saint jean sur richelieu Quebec, be sure to check out Perrault's restaurant, Le Numero 7. Like Kingsbury, who was paving the way for the next generation of Canadian freestyle skiers, Donovan Bailey did the same for sprinters in our country. In our next episode of Athlete to Athlete, Bailey connects with Aaron Brown, a medal hopeful on the track for Tokyo. 
They'll touch on pressures, adversity, and handling the racial issues that Donovan spoke out about prior to his triumphs in Atlanta. We'll see you soon for the next episode of Athlete to Athlete. I'm Arash Fadin. Thank you for watching.